All right. Cool. We're live. We're live for sure, right? Like, yeah, I think this time, time. <laughs> we've had um, troubles uh, in the past with going live before. But if uh, if you want to say hi in the chats, let us know. Are we live? Can you hear us? Uh, can you see us? Are our slides looking okay? You let us know. I see we've got 30 people here so far. We'll um, give it a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see anything in the chats. Oh, Ileana just said hi, everyone. All right. Hey, hey Ileana. Okay, let's see. He's going to be our moderator today, actually. So, ah, oh, we're live. Thank you, Kevin. Perfect. Hey, Luke. Awesome. Hey, John. Okay, cool. Nice. Larry says it's all good, too. We'll still give it a couple minutes in case more people want to hop in. I know we were supposed to have, I think, 80 people coming in today. Oh, wow. But, uh, we're at 30 right now, so. Oh, boy, the pressure is on. <laughs> okay, we, we got this. It'll be fantastic. Again, we're already live. No technical difficulties so far. Knock on wood. I am, like, cursed with webinar technical difficulties. <laughs> hey. I'm with you there. So, yeah, fingers so crossed. So good. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are you drinking, Kat? Coffee, but like not great coffee. It's the instant, you know, um, the one that you like put it in there, then you add hot water. It's not nice because oh. I broke my um, the coffee carafe. I think that's what it's called, the one that goes into the coffee machine. So, I've been buying a lot of Starbucks. Oh. Not the greatest. <laughs> Five dollar coffee, breaking the bank, but it's <laughs> okay. okay. How We're about okay. you? How about you, Danny? What are you drinking? I'm uh dr drinking some uh, sparkling water because I'm uh, fancy like that. But yeah, it's in my my mug. So with the D, with the D, with the D for Danny, for Danny. And uh, I guess maybe this is a good time to introduce ourselves. Uh, we'll wait um, just a few more minutes because this will be a bigger webinar um, or, or more. It's a hot topic. Um, but I'm Danny. I'm on the support team and onboarding team. And um, well, I'm Katya. <laughs> I'm, I'm also on the. I'm on. Yeah, I'm on the other side. So, but I'm on the uh, support and onboarding team as well. You guys might have uh, spoken with us before, so um, we're happy to see you. You know, attending the webinar. Uh, I think a lot of people have been really looking forward to this. Um, we're going to be covering a lot, but as you guys all know, QuickBooks is huge. There's so many capabilities within it. Um, so today we're going to kind of focus on the overview, how to set up your QuickBooks, what's going to sync over. Um, and then uh, we're probably going to have more QuickBooks webinars in the future. So if you guys have any ideas after our webinar today, if we didn't cover something that you actually want covered, let us know in the comments because um, we'd be happy to do webinars on those topics. I know Karisha has mentioned that uh, she's always trying to come up with new topics that people are going to want to watch and listen to. So uh, yeah, please give us some suggestions in the comments on the side. Um, I don't know if you got, if you want to wait a little bit more. We're at 33 so far. Yeah, I, I should get started. So. Yeah, I think we're good to get started and yeah. um, we'll have this recorded as well. So you'll be able to find a recording afterwards mm -hmm. if you want to rewatch it. And then just one last thing I want to preface. So again, because Quick QuickBooks is so huge and um, everyone kind of has their own workflow within QuickBooks, uh, if you have any account questions or plan questions, um, we do recommend reaching out to QuickBooks themselves. If you have any uh, questions about the integration and how it syncs, but it's a more specific question um, within your business, definitely reach out to the support team at support at inflowinventory.com. And then if there are any general questions or questions regarding the topics we're covering today, definitely feel free to post them in the comments and we'll be slowly going through them. Nice. Thanks, Kat. Thanks. All right. Uh, so for today's topics, it's going to be a very high level overview. So we just for the uh, sake of time and probably information overload, we'll um, only touch on some things, uh, some topics today, and it'll be the integration overview. So um, syncing your purchase orders and your sales orders. Um, and we'll also go over the setup process. So those are our two topics for today. All right, so we're gonna start off with the QBO integration overview. And the most important thing to know about the integration is that it's one way. 
So what that means is that information from inflow syncs to QBO, but not the other way around. So when one of your orders syncs to QBO from inflow, any changes that you make to that order on the QBO side uh, won't get updated and won't get pushed back to inflow. So only data that's entered into uh, inflow gets pushed to QBO. So it is one way. And the things that you can sync are purchase orders. And along with that, you'll be able to sync your inventory value and your cost of goods sold. Um, and you can also sync sales orders. So again, it is one way. And another thing to uh, keep in mind about the integration is that you can have both the purchase order and sales order sync, um, or you can choose to only sync one of those. So you don't have to have both the purchase orders and sales order sync um, if you don't want to. And we'll see all that in the um, setup uh, steps later on in the webinar. So we're gonna start off with the purchase order, inventory value and cost of goods sold sync. So Inflow can sync your purchase orders uh, to QBO so that you're not doing double entry. It's gonna save you time and uh, it'll be accurate in that sense because all of your data is being entered into one side. And uh, just to prep you guys, uh, we will be going uh, into a demo. So we'll see how this works in real time, but just to give you uh, just an overview before we do that, um, the way that the sync works, um, on the purchase order side, anytime that you create a purchase order in Inflow and its inventory status is set to partial or fulfilled, uh, that's what's going to trigger the sync from Inflow to QBO. So essentially what that means is anytime that you receive at least one of the items on the purchase order, that's when the sync gets tri uh, triggered and uh, Inflow is going to create that purchase order in QBO. And when Inflow creates that purchase order in QBO, Inflow is going to create it as a QBO bill. So that's the terminology um, that uh, you'll want to keep in mind. In Inflow, it's called a purchase order. In QBO, it's called a bill. And we're going to see that when we do the demo. And on the payment side, um, you will have an option to sync payments. Uh, so what that means is when you enter a payment into the purchase order on the inflow side, that payment does get synced to the corresponding uh, order on the QBO side. Uh, QBO does separate its payments. So in inflow, you're going to enter a payment on the purchase order. And on the QBO side, there's going to be a QBO bill payment that's created and linked to the QBO bill. Um, and just a quick note about the payments on the purchase order side, uh, inflow doesn't sync vendor credit. So uh, what that means, and sorry, uh, the uh, inventory sync, sorry, the purchase order sync doesn't sync vendor credit. Uh, so Inflow has an ability to keep track of vendor credit. So if your vendor gives you credit um, to, to use to pay for a, a purchase order, Inflow allows you to keep track of that. And you can even apply that vendor credit to pay for a purchase order in Inflow. Uh, but if you pay for a purchase order using vendor credit, that vendor credit doesn't sync to QBO. Um, either QBO doesn't have that functionality or the uh, uh, sync just doesn't support it. So keep that in mind. Um, and there is another scenario where uh, you can enter a payment on uh, a PO that's unfulfilled. And what will be created in QBO is the QBO expense. So um, I mentioned that the purchase order sync is triggered when a purchase order is marked as fulfilled or is partially fulfilled. Um, but in this case, you can enter a payment uh, onto a purchase order that's unfulfilled. Um, so if you pay for your purchase orders in advance before receiving items, for example, what'll happen is Inflow is going to create a QBO expense. Um, and then as that purchase order becomes uh, fulfilled or partially fulfilled and you start receiving items um, for that purchase order, uh, this QBO expense will be converted into a QBO bill payment. And that purchase order is going to be created as a bill in uh, QBO. So we'll see how that uh, all looks like uh, in a moment. Um, and then just a few uh, notes on what fields do sync from Inflow to QBO. So yes, as Danny had mentioned, um, when you create a purchase order and it syncs to QuickBooks, uh, there are a few fields that will actually sync over into that um, 
bill itself. And so the fields are the bill date, which is the received date, the bill number, which is your inflow order number, um, if you have a due date assigned to the purchase order, that will sync over as well. Obviously, your products, um, taxes, and then any remarks that you have on your purchase order will actually sync over to the memo field on the bill. So those are the fields that will sync over. Um, and we'll also go through the sales orders uh, later and what fields will sync there. Cool. Thank you. All right, and just to get into the demo part, so I'm, uh, we're going to go through how the sync works and what the corresponding QBO bills and bill payments look like. I'm just going to switch over to a screen share. Let's hope this all works well. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we did it. We did it, guys. You did okay. it so smoothly. Like, how are you <laughs> such a pro at this? Well, I did practice. I did practice uh, at least once. I like it. <laughs> All right, so we're in the uh, Inflow web app right now, and um, I've just pre-filled a purchase order in the web app. Um, this applies to the desktop app as well as the mobile app. So if you're creating purchase orders in your desktop, uh, Windows desktop app or the mobile app, this still applies. Um, so I've got a, a purchase order here. I've named it. The purchase order is called PO QBO webinar. Just to make it super clear when it does sync over, we'll be able to see it in, in QBO. Um, I've added two items to my uh, order here, and you can see that the status is unfulfilled right now. So I haven't received any of these items yet. So um, this order is saved to my database. And if we go to the QuickBook side, we can expect that that order is not going to show up in my uh, QBO uh, because, again, it will only be triggered. Uh, the sync will only be triggered once I start receiving items on that purchase order. So let's go to, to QuickBooks. Now in QuickBooks, your bills and your bill payments are, are going to be showing up in your expenses tab. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And here we are. So these are all of my bills and bill payments um, that have synced previously. And uh, we can see here that my PO, which is called POQBO webinar is not showing up in my list. Um, and that's because again, I haven't fulfilled that order. But let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just receive one of those items. I'll receive that green dress and I'm going to save it. I haven't paid for the order just yet. So now that that's saved, that triggers the sync. And let's go back to QBO and refresh. Also, while it's loading, I just had a quick question from Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, so Elizabeth asked, will, uh, when syncing, does classes get synced as well? And I actually wanted to answer that question because I tested it out yesterday. Um, so there is no class field in Inflow to actually sync over. And I thought that maybe if we had assigned classes to an existing order and then any new orders come in, it would know where to go. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like QuickBooks um, automates that. So when you do have new orders coming in from inflow and syncing over, it doesn't assign the class, even if you've assigned it to previous orders. So unfortunately, no, um, classes don't get assigned. Um, and then Elizabeth had also asked if we're going to be doing sales orders. We will be discussing that right after purchase orders. Um, and does in QuickBooks integrate with, uh, or does Inflow integrate with QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise? And it does not currently. Um, we only integrate with QuickBooks Online. That's a great so, question. Just wanted to quickly <laughs> respond to those while we had a little bit of the loading. Go yeah, on. nice. Thank you, Kat. No, thanks, Danny. And <laughs> I guess you can continue. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, do put them in the chats. We'll do our best to, to answer them. We know some of the questions might be a little bit complicated. So we'll ask that uh, you reach out to the support team or we'll grab your email um, and be able to reach out to you that way as well. Uh, but yes, yeah, so let's take a look at our expenses in QBO, and then we can see that our PO did sync over, and it's been created as a bill. So again, it gets created as a bill in QBO. In Inflow, it's called a purchase order. So let's take a look at what the, that bill looks like in QBO. And I know, uh, I guess my internet's not too quick <laughs> right now with the webinar going on in the background, but here we go. So we've got that bill. Uh, we've got the balance here and the balance is reflected for the items that I've received so far. So I've got just that one item there, green dress. So that is the takeaway. Um, 
as you're receiving uh, items on the purchase order, only those items that have been received so far are going to show up on the bill on the QBO side. So that's something to keep in mind. But one thing to note, and I love that you brought this up, Danny, and actually showed this, is that um, the benefit of also having that is if you don't receive an item and you actually want to remove it from your original purchase order, that you won't really have to do anything in QuickBooks because it hasn't actually brought it in. So you are saving yourself oh. a bit of a step there. Nice. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's a great tip. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, yeah, if we go back to that order now, we're going to go ahead and fulfill the rest of it. And we're also going to pay for that order. So you're paying your vendor at this point and you are uh, marking it uh, as paid in inflow on the inflow side. And we'll see that um, as you can see here, as you're updating a previously synced order, that order and those updates get up, uh, get pushed to QBO. So that corresponding bill in QBO does get updated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And then hopefully that bill is going to still show up there. Yeah, it always likes whenever we do yeah, the webinars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry everyone. Um, there we go. Okay, so we've got both uh, of our items on here now. Um, we can see the payment status is paid, um, and we can actually click into the payment and see that as well. And as I mentioned, when you are uh, adding a payment to a purchase order, that comes into uh, QuickBooks as a bill payment. So QuickBooks does separate them out into two separate um, entries. Um, so we've got one here. So we've got the bill uh, here, PO QBO webinar. And then we also have a bill payment, uh, which is coming in just over here. Uh, and we can open that up just to look uh, at the details if we wanted to. Um, so that's how the PO sync works is again, it comes in as a bill and a bill payment uh, on the QBO side. All right, so I'm just going to switch back very quickly, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should uh, start from where we left off. I hope so, okay, perfect, there we go. All right, so that's the purchase order sync there. Um, there's obviously some other, um, some more details about that, but we're going a very, uh, very high level right now, just uh, in the interest of time, um, so that we can give you guys uh, more information about the uh, integration as a whole. But if you do want more, um, uh, maybe a, another webinar or something um, for us to go into more details, please leave a comment in the chat. All right, so the other thing that I mentioned uh, that gets synced um, is the inventory value. Um, so if you've got the purchase order sync enabled, Inflow is also going to be syncing your inventory value um, with the QBO. Now, your inventory value is the cost of all of the items that you currently have in stock. So you can run reports on this on the Inflow side to get uh, your inventory value and um, as you can imagine, your inventory value can be affected by multiple things. So if you're purchasing items, if you're selling items, if you're making stock adjustments or you're uh, creating work orders, um, if you're building finished products from uh, raw material, for example, um, you, this is essentially changing your stock levels. Uh, you're removing items or you're adding items via purchase orders. So your inventory value, your total inventory value is going to be changing. Um, and also, of course, if you're costing changes, if your um, items cost changes for any reason, that's also going to affect your inventory value. So the inventory value sync is uh, triggered whenever a purchase order is pushed from Inflow to QBO. And Inflow is going to be updating QBO's inventory asset account um, with the new inventory value. So uh, during the setup step, we're going to see where we map uh, the uh, QBO accounts. So we're going to be telling Inflow which QBO accounts it should be updating uh, when this sync happens. Um, but uh, know that Inflow does uh, update the um, inventory value when a purchase order is pushed. Um, and uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, there's other ways that your inventory value uh, can be changed. So through sales orders, for example, um, we've also included a way to manually push the inventory value. Um, and you can do that by uh, logging into your account on the web app and going to the integration page and manually clicking a button that uh, pushes that inventory value. So we're gonna take a look at what that looks like. Um, 
on inflow and also in QBO. I'm just going to go ahead and change back to my screen. Okay, so as I mentioned, you can run some reports in inflow to get your inventory value. Um, so let's go ahead and do that right now. And I'm just running the, um, sorry, the sales by product details report. And we do have a uh, we do have a, a webinar on reports if you wanted to learn more on how to run reports in Inflow. So I've got the um, do I have the right report? I probably do not have the right report. You know what? One moment, everyone. Let me just grab the right report. So I can get you the inventory value. Um, just bear with me for just a second. I also apologize for all the sirens in the background <laughs> on my side. Oh no. I hope you're okay, Kat. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm uh I'm on a webinar, so I'm so nervous. That's why they're coming for me. <laughs> oh no. All right. Sorry everyone. Just checking to make sure I've got the right uh report to run for the inventory value. I did have it up previously, but that's okay. Now take your time. There we go. Again, I think we're covering a lot in the webinar today. So um, it's, I think people might need a, a couple seconds just to process everything that we're doing as well. Good call. Good call. Yes. Yeah, so I'm in the sales reports already. So that's already a, a big no, no. We should be in the inventory reports, of course. So inventory summary is what we're looking at. And uh, I've got here total cost value as part of the data that can be generated on this report. And I'm going to go ahead and generate the report. And basically, this report is generating um, just my inventory details, uh, my what I currently have in stock, and that includes my uh, total cost value. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what my total cost value is. So right now, my total cost value is 169547. That's my total cost right there. And um, as I mentioned, um, Whenever a purchase order is uh, synced with Inflow, uh, from Inflow to QBO, uh, Inflow also syncs the inventory value. And since we just did a sync, uh, purchase order sync, that should have been updated as well. And when you're looking at your accounts, uh, you're going to go to accounting and then chart of accounts on the QBO side. And um, as I mentioned, it's going to be the QBO. Um, inventory asset account. There we go. And there's the balance. So 169547. So that has been synced over. Um, and that's where you're going to see your inventory value show up on the QBO side. Yeah. And I've had a question before um, where people ask, is it really keeping track of inventory? And it isn't keeping track of like inventory quantities it's keeping track of the cost of your inventory so the value of it and that's where danny was showing the inventory value account so you can see that there yes thank you and um now that uh, we talked about that uh, inventory value the cost of goods sold is another thing that syncs over when you have the purchase order sync enabled and um, the cost of goods sold uh, gets calculated by inflow whenever a sales order is marked as fulfilled um, and inflow is going to update QBO's uh, cost of goods sold account um, with the cost of goods sold value for that order so inflow calculates the cost of goods sold on a per sales order basis and that gets synced uh, to uh, QuickBooks as well. So a quick note on that is I just talked about sales orders. So of course you need a sales order uh, in order to calculate the cost of goods sold. Um, so you don't need to have the sales order sync enabled um, if you wanted your cost of goods sold to be pushed uh, from inflow to uh, QBO. So as long as you've got the purchase order sync enabled, your cost of goods sold will be synced to uh, QuickBooks. And um, in case you're wondering, uh, there's a lot of uh, factors that go into calculating the cost of goods sold on the inflow side. We're not going to talk about that today, but we do have a great uh, knowledge base article on our support site that you can uh, reference uh, for all of the ways that inflow uh, calculates the cost of goods sold. And uh, Kat, actually, if you have a moment, um, if you want to find that uh, knowledge base article and um, maybe post it into the uh, the chat in case anyone's interested, but it's the cost of goods sold article on our on our knowledge base. 
And before, little, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> just because I just oh, yeah. posted it. But um, oh, thank you. Before we go into anything else, uh, there was a question from Joanny, and it's Does inflow separate cost of goods sold from cost of goods used? And with that, um, Joanny, I don't know if I'm understanding the question correctly, but in terms of cost of goods used, do you mean used internally? Uh, like your team is using them up instead of actually being sold out to customers? Because um, in that case, uh, it really depends on how you set it up. Usually we recommend if you're using goods um, internally that you set it up still through a sales order, but you track the customer as internal. And in that way, you can run reports in inflow to see what's been used up um, internally versus the customers that you've sold it to. So I, I hope that answers the question. Um, I don't know, Danny, if you understand it in any different way, or if I understood that correctly, I think. I think I've got it the way you do. So okay. I think that was, that was good, thank you. Yeah, Joanny, let us know if that's um, the answer you were kind of hoping for, or if you have, um, if you can like word it in a different way. Awesome, thank you. and. Um, Yes, so just to take a look at the cost of goods sold sync and what that's going to look like on Inflow and QBO. As I mentioned, uh, Inflow is going to calculate the cost of goods sold on a per sales order basis. And you can run a report on this just to see. Uh, we've got the sales order profit report that does that. And I've just ran it here and I've got the cost of goods sold in uh, as one of the columns. So we'll just look at one of those sales orders. My sales order numbers are a little bit of a mess. Um, but if we take a look at um, or actually, let's uh, let's create a new sales order really quick, um, just to make it super super clear um, on what that looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up our web app. And yes, my internet is a little bit laggy today. I'm going to create a new sales order and just add a an item here. And I'm going to just call it COGS. My sales order is called COGS. I'm going to go ahead and save that order. And that's going to push the sync. So uh, as I mentioned, the cost of goods sold is going to be uh, updated whenever a sales order is uh, synced from inflow to uh, QBO. I'm going to go ahead and fulfill it and mark it as paid. And we are going to be talking about the sales order sync shortly. Um, so we'll we'll talk about when it does trigger the sync. Now I'm going to run um, the profit report, the sales order profit report, and I am jumping from our uh, web app to our desktop app. I do prefer the the reports in the desktop app, so that's why I'm I'm using that. Um, but uh, we're we can you again you can use the web app as well uh, for your reports. So let's take a look at the uh, sales order I just created. My cost of goods sold is zero, of course, because I probably have no costing in my uh, in my database. So I apologize there, but I mean, if the sync does um, does work, uh, oh, sorry, that's not the right one. We've got sales order cogs is the one I should be looking at. Here we are. It's forty four dollars and eighty four cents. So that's what our cost of goods sold should be in QuickBooks. And let's take a look here. So the uh, QuickBooks account that Inflow is going to be updating is going to be the co cost of goods sold account, um, as you can imagine. Ah, here we go. And let's run the report. And again, it's on a per sales order basis. So we are going to run the report here. And my um, here's that sales order, sales order COGS. And there we can see that the cost of goods sold has been up, uh, sorry, pushed as well. So hopefully that's clear there. Um, it does happen whenever a sales order is marked as fulfilled on the inflow side. All right. Sorry, and I'm also answering, I'm trying to type out answers uh, for some of the questions. Because um, Luke asked uh, what I just described for Joanny, if um, that's how work order should be handled or an internal sales order. So the difference is with a work order, if you're manufacturing a good and you're using it up that way, um, it should be within a work order. And that will update your inventory value sync because again, you're changing the level of inventory that you have. Um, your cost of goods good sold is only gonna be affected by a sales order. And I recommend uh, setting up an internal sales order if you're using up a product, but it's not part of a manufacturing process. So if it's, you know, sometimes people wanna track, I, I'm gonna use something really small, but like if people wanna track like notebooks or paper things you're not using it up 
um, to build something else, you're just getting rid of it. And again, you might not, um, you're not selling it to a customer, you're just tracking it for internal use that it's now been used up and it deducts the inventory in a sales order. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. All right, so that was the purchase order, uh, inventory value, and cost of goods sold sync. Uh, you can also choose to sync your sales orders that you create in Inflow to QBO. Again, it's a one-way sync, which means uh, data from Inflow is pushed to QBO and not the other way around, so keep that in mind. All right, so with the sales orders, um, Inflow is going to push a sales order to QBO when it's marked as invoiced, paid, or partially paid. So in this case, we are looking at the payment status of the order, um, and that's what's going to trigger the sync. So if you've got a sales order that's unpaid and un uninvoiced, it's not going to sync to QBO. All right, and some terminology again before we go into the demo. Um, sales orders uh, that are pushed from Inflow to QBO are going to be created as invoices, credit memos, and um, the payments that are applied to the order is are going, going to come in as payments. So again, sales orders in Inflow, invoices and credit memos in QBO, and payments are going, going to come in as separate entries, and they'll be called payments in QBO. And depending on the um, the amount paid, uh, that's how the um, that's how the the sync will determine whether or not to create it as an invoice or a credit memo. Um, so if the total paid amount on the order is uh, positive, so your your customer has paid you, um, it'll show up as an invoice. Um, and now if the amount of an unpaid sales order is negative, and that sounds a little bit confusing, but essentially what this might be used for is a blank refund. So if you just wanted to issue a credit to your customer, for example, you could create a sales order um, with a, a, a service item called credit, or sorry, a, a non-stocked item called credit, and then give it a negative unit price, let's say negative 500. Um, that's going to create a, a negative uh, amount on an unpaid order since your customer has never paid you for the order. And when that syncs to QBO, it'll show up as a credit memo. And uh, refunds are also synced on sales orders and they'll be listed as journal entries in QBO. And uh, just an important note um, is that the, um, the sync is going to sync the invoice date on the inflow order and not the order date. Uh, so that's uh, a little bit of a distinction there as well. So QBO is interested in the invoice date and not the order date. Yeah. All right, and um, in terms of the sync um, and customers, your customers on those sales orders, um, Inflow is going to be looking um, for an existing customer on the QBO side. Um, and if it doesn't find one, uh, it is going to create a new customer for you on the QBO side. Um, but uh, we only set certain fields. Um, and the fields that we set are the name, the billing address, the shipping address, the phone number, the email and the currency. So those are the only fields that Inflow will set um, if a customer doesn't already exist in QBO. And just as a, an important note, Inflow doesn't sync your customer records. So the customers that you have in Inflow aren't going to be synced to QBO on their own. Um, Inflow only syncs sales orders. So if that customer happens to be on a sales order, Inflow is going to look to see if it all, if that customer exists in QBO. And if it does, it'll update the record. If it doesn't, it'll create a new customer record uh, for you. And uh, a very special note is uh, after a customer has been created initially, so if this is a brand new customer that doesn't exist in QBO, Inflow, Inflow will not update that customer's profile in QBO with subsequent uh, sales order syncs and that and in terms in the uh in terms of the customer details is what i mean so it'll create the customer profile but after that it doesn't update the customer details um if you change it in inflow because again inflow doesn't sync customer records um only sales orders so that's a a big distinction there and to note with that is also that um again because it doesn't sync the records if you are updating something in inflow you would have to update it in quickbooks as well under the customer profile because again it doesn't do the sync the original sync that comes in it links it to the id number uh, from what i understand in the background and that's how it knows what customer to pull but again any additional information has to be um 
changed on both sides and updated on both sides. Um, one other thing to note, I don't know if you mentioned it, Danny, but um, that when you do integrate um, inflow with QuickBooks, it will not bring in old orders that have been invoiced or paid. Um, so just to take note of that, if you do want to bring in an old order, um, the trick is that you kind of undo the invoicing or undo the pay and then redo it again, and that will bring it into QuickBooks. Um, and with that, <laughs> the sales order, when it does sync over, um, most of the fields from the sales order will actually come into QuickBooks. So it's, I think, a little bit easier to mention which fields don't sync. And that's the purchase order number, the sales rep, the location of items, and then the non-customer costs. Yes, thank you. All right. And into the demo we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back in QuickBooks, and since we're here, um, your sales uh, and uh, and all of that is going to come into the sales tab in QBO. Um, so they'll come in again as payments, as invoices, uh, as journal entries for refunds, for example, and credit memos if you're issuing credit to your customers. So let's take a look uh, with a demo. I've got a sales order set up here. Uh, I've named it sales uh, so qbo webinar again so that we can spot it immediately when it syncs over um, i've added two items to the order now uh, a little bit of a difference from the purchase order side um, in the sales order sync what's important is the payment status so uh, i can go ahead and receive these items this and this order isn't going to sync to qbo until i've marked it as invoiced uh, paid or partially paid um, so Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and fulfill it. And I'm also going to go ahead and mark it as invoiced. So I haven't paid it yet. I'm just marking it as invoiced. And that does a, an automatic save. So we should go back to our sales uh, in QBO and let's re refresh. And hopefully this doesn't take an obscene amount of time. <laughs> It hasn't been too bad, no. All right, not bad, not bad. So Until I said that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, so let's find it. There it is. That's the QBO webinar. I'm glad I renamed it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Uh, I'm sure you guys won't be too surprised, but most of the fields do sync over. And uh, the, the balance will show for the items that are on that order. There we go. And do I have the correct one paid? Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so that's a QBO webinar. That's the correct one. The status did say paid. So maybe I did pay it. Let's see. I didn't pay it yet. So I'm not sure why it says paid there, but. <laughs> Can you refresh it one more time? Yeah. Yes, let's see. So it does stay paid there. It should should be invoiced, but perhaps Did you click on the on. check mark within when you clicked into it? I may have. Uh it's very possible. Let's see. Um there we go. QBR webinar. I'm gonna click it. It does say status paid, so that's interesting. Um Let's try a different one because I, I don't know if you I think you might have clicked in the check mark um oh, when you clicked into it. So Let's do a different one. Let's, I don't know if that's okay with you. I don't yeah. know if you feel comfortable doing it on the spot again, but let's create maybe a different uh, sales order, maybe uh, SOQBO webinar one <laughs> or like two. There we go. So we've just done the same thing. Let's see. We're saving it again. It's not going to sync over until I've marked it as Peter invoice. Yeah, mark it as invoiced and let's see. There we go. So it's invoiced and let's take a look. How is your payment status set with the integration? You know, is the payment set to push? It should be, yes. Okay. So you should have that on. But um, in any case, if it is saying paid, um, we'll look into that. Because, um, yes, it is coming in as paid, uh, although it isn't. Um, so that's something we'll look into. But essentially, when you do apply a payment to an order, it's going to come in as a separate and uh, entity called payment. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the pay, uh, the order as paid. And then that does a, an automatic save, which pushes the sync. I'm going to refresh. 
And there's a lot of refreshing going on. So bear with us here. Come on. <laughs> Usually I don't think people would have to refresh that often. I mean, they just let it run in the background, but um, yeah. yeah, hopefully. Uh, but there's our QVO invoice. And if we click into it, we'll see that there's a payment link to it as well. Yeah, I'm curious if for some reason maybe there's a bug or something within it that um, when you fulfilled it, or not fulfilled it, when you invoiced it, it showed up as the payment. It might have actually. So that's something we'll look into, but essentially as you mark it as paid, uh, Inflow will keep track of those payments that you've made and it'll come in as a separate payment here. Mm -hmm. It's possible that I've got uh, payment push set uh, turned on and I've got some settings that is causing uh, that issue. So I apologize, um, but we'll look into that as well. But the ideally, the it'll come in as a separate payment um, and your order is going to be marked as paid. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let's get back to our slides. Okay. So yeah, so just a quick note, I think you touched on it, um, Kat, previously. So um, the sync uh, doesn't ex uh, doesn't um, sync existing orders. So if you already have orders in, in Flow and you turn on the QBO sync, those existing orders will not sync to QBO on their own. You're going to have to retroactively sync them by making some small change to them. Um, because as we've seen, uh, as you update orders uh, that have the correct status, so if it's a purchase order and it's been fulfilled or partially fulfilled, or you have a sales order that's been paid, invoiced, or partially paid, um, it, if you make a change to an order in Inflow, that triggers the sync. Um, and it'll push existing orders to QBO that way. So what we usually recommend is to go into Inflow, add a small change to the order, maybe an invisible space into the remarks field, save that existing order, and that'll push the sync. All right, so now the setting up part. So this is probably the part where um, I think most people will need some help with. Um, so we've created a video here that we're gonna start playing. Um, that'll go through the, the entire setup process. So do let us know the, uh, your questions. And I would say, um, just a quick reminder, all of these setup steps are found on our knowledge base article, our support article um, that you can reference when you are setting up QBO for the first time. Please do re uh, reach out to the support team if you have any trouble there and we'll be happy to help. And just a quick, some quick notes before you begin with the setup. So you'll want to make sure that your home currency in Inflow is the same as your home currency used in QuickBooks. So otherwise, the sync will not work. And if you use more than one currency in your Inflow Cloud orders, you're going to have to turn on the multi-currency settings in Q uh, QuickBooks. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing to keep in mind is um, your customer currency settings in QBO can't be changed after a sales order has been synced. So if you've saved a specific customer currency to a customer record in Inflow, just make sure that it matches the one that you have uh, set up in QBO. And then finally, the taxes uh, section, you'll want to make sure that the taxes you have in Inflow also exist in QBO. Otherwise, you won't be able to set up the integration at all. So if you're missing a tax rate in QBO um, that you have an inflow, you'll need to go onto QBO and create it there first. Also, before maybe we play the video, uh, Mark had a question. Once the invoice has been captured, as well as the payment, both are appearing on separate lines. Does it reconcile, match the payment to their respective invoice or such uh, should it be done manually? No, so it does link it. Yeah. So they are linked together. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll be able to. Uh, so we clicked into that order on QBO and in the payment status, there was a link to all of the payments made for that order. Um, it wasn't showing up right on my end. So I apologize there, but you'd be able to click into those payments from the payment status. Um, so they are linked. Perfect. Thank Great you. Great question. Integration setup. 
We're gonna navigate to our web app. Oh, Danny, it's not playing uh, on our end here. I think you might have to exit out of the, yeah. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Integration setup. Okay, we're, we're gonna, gonna navigate to, to our web app uh, where we're going to be making pause. changes to <laughs> integration <laughs> settings. Oh, no. The sound is playing twice. I don't know oh, why. Boy. Oh no, of course <laughs> it is. Um, Want to make sure that you're logged in as how about an now? admin, otherwise you won't have access okay, to the I think it's good. And, All right. Uh, to get to the go. integrations page, Did have technical you can do that by going to the main menu, so and scrolling down to options, and then clicking on the integrations tab. And that's where you'll see the QuickBooks Online integration settings tile, and you're going to click on setup to start the setup process. So the first thing that we want to do is connect our inflow to the QBO account. So click on connect and that's going to navigate us to the QuickBooks online authorization page. So we do have to give permission to inflow to make changes to the orders in QBO when those sync over. So let's go ahead and click on connect to authorize that uh, setting. And that will take us back to the integration wizard. So the first, thing we'll be setting up is the sales order push. So you can turn this off if you don't want Inflow to be uh, syncing your sales orders to QBO. And to do that, you can just toggle the enable push button off. But in this case, we do want it to sync. So let's go ahead and turn it back on. And now we're going to be mapping uh, our or telling Inflow which QBO accounts it should be updating when uh, these sales orders are pushed from Inflow to QBO. And we'll be doing the same thing for the purchase order side of things. So the important part here is to have your QBO accounts already set up before you uh, start the integration setup process. And if you're not sure what the QBO accounts are or how you should be setting them up, um, I suggest reaching out to your accountants or even to the QBO support uh, or knowledge base um, just for uh, guidance on best practices and how you should be setting those up on the QBO side. Um, as you know, uh, Inflow is a master at inventory management, but the accounting side is all taken care of uh, by QuickBooks, so I would uh, recommend reaching out to them um, for guidance on how to set that up. But once you do have your QuickBooks online account set up, we're going to now have to tell Inflow uh, which accounts it should be updating when orders sync over. Uh, so the first one that we're going to be um, setting up is the product income account. So this is typically the account in QuickBooks that you use to receive money for products sold. Um, so we're going to be selecting that from the dropdown. So uh, in this case, uh, you might have um, a specific one that you've set up that you'd like to um, update um, when uh, sales orders are pushed. Um, in our case, we've got one called um, sales of product income, so it's an income account. Um, and the next thing that you can change is, or update rather, is whether or not uh, Inflow should be including the customer's name in the invoice that is pushed. So for some users, they don't want to have that uh, customer name included in the invoice in QBO, so you can uh, turn that off if uh, that's the case. The other thing that we want to uh, tell Inflow is whether or not it should be syncing the payment details um, on the order. So any time that you have a sales order and it's marked as paid um, or your customer has paid you um, a certain amount and you update that payment in Inflow, uh, that payment does get uh, updated or synced to the corresponding order in QBO. Um, and just as a recap, when a sales order is marked as uh, invoiced, paid or partially paid, that's when, uh, or that's the trigger um, to push that order to, from Inflow to QBO. Um, and so if you have payment push enabled, that means that Inflow is also going to be updating that corresponding uh, QBO order whenever a payment is marked on the order in Inflow. So again, the integration is one way. So data is pushed from Inflow to QBO and not the other way around. So anytime you make changes to the order on the QBO side, that change does not get synced back to Inflow. So the payment push uh, setting is important. Um, if you are making changes to the QBO, uh, to the order on the QBO side, um, 
in terms of payment. So if you manually mark the order as paid on the QBO side, Inflow doesn't get that information back because it's a one-way integration. So if you have payment push enabled and you are also marking the uh, order as paid on the QBO side, you have one source of uh, trying to pay the order, so on the QBO side, and then you also have inflow uh, paying the order. Uh, so if you were to mark the order as paid in inflow, you've now marked that order paid as twice. Uh, once on the QBO side, once on the inflow side, and now you have duplicate payments. So if you are marking the order as paid manually in QBO, or you're receiving payment for that order from a secondary source, let's say you've got a payment processing platform that um, you accept payments for and it updates that QBO order, um, you'll want to make sure that payment push is turned off. Uh, that way you don't get duplicate payments. But if you don't have that issue, you can have payment push turned on so that anytime that you update the payment status in Inflow, that gets synced with the corresponding order in QBO. And we're going to want to want to tell Inflow which account, uh, which payment account it should be updating on the QBO side. Um, and so again, the payment account is the bank account uh, that's used to receive uh, or send payments on the QBO side. Um, right now, we only map to one payment account when it comes to the sales order push. So let's go ahead and map that. And let's click Next. So that was the sales order sync settings. Now the next step is to uh, set up our purchase order and inventory value push settings. So again, you can turn this settings off or the sync off if you don't want Inflow to be um, pushing purchase orders or updating the inventory value and cost of goods sold accounts on QBO. You can turn this off. In this case, we want to keep it on. So that means that any time that a purchase order is marked as fulfilled or partially fulfilled, that order is going to get synced to QBO. And again, we're going to start mapping accounts um, that uh, we want Inflow to be updating when these purchase orders do get synced. Uh, so the first one is the cost of goods sold account. And if we recall, the cost of goods sold account uh, gets updated in QBO um, anytime a sales order is marked as fulfilled. So we'll want to tell Inflow which uh, is the cost of goods sold account on the QBO side. And you'll want to make sure again that these accounts already exist on the QBO side, otherwise you won't see any accounts listed in the drop-down and you won't be able to complete the setup. So in this case, we're going to select the cost of goods sold account. And then the next account that we're going to map is the inventory asset. Uh, account. So again, anytime that your inventory, uh, or sorry, rather, anytime that a purchase order is synced from Inflow to QBO, Inflow also in, uh, syncs the inventory uh, value on the QBO side so that it matches the inventory value on the Inflow side. And as we discussed before, um, the inventory value changes not only from receiving inventory, but basically any action that's going to change your inventory um, stock levels or the cost of your inventory. So if there's purchases, uh, sales, um, if you make um, adjustment to the cost of your products, um, your inventory value will change. So either you can, uh, or any time a purchase order is synced from Inflow to QBO, Inflow will update the inventory assets value account in QBO, or you can manually have the inventory assets value sync, um, especially if you're doing anything other than purchase orders that's going to be um, updating that inventory asset value. Uh, so here we're going to go ahead and select an asset account on the QBO side to map to. So that's going to be our QBO account that Inflow updates. And then the other thing we're going to, or the other account, sorry, that we're going to have to map is the adjustments and other costs account. So this is the account that Inflow is going to use to balance out the inventory assets account when it needs to make the inventory asset value match. Um, and so what I mean by this is if the inventory value on the QBO side is different than the inventory value on the 
inflow side. Inflow is going to push a sink so that the inventory value matches, but in order to do that, it needs to pull that amount from a different QBO account uh, in order to balance it out. So, for example, if the inventory value in inflow is $100 more than the QBO side, inflow is going to pull um, that um, amount from this adjustments or other costs account. Uh, in QBO. So we're going to tell Inflow which QBO account it should be using to balance out that inventory assets uh, asset value. And this account is always a cost of goods sold account. So we can go ahead and select one of those. And then uh, finally the payment settings. So this is similar to the payment settings in uh, on the sales order push side. Um, so if you are receiving or sorry sending payment to your vendors um, Outside of inflow, so if you're marking those purchase orders as paid um, on the QBO side um, or you're sending payment uh, via a secondary source that's also updating that order on the QBO side, you'll want to turn payment push off to, um, to make sure that you're not recording duplicate payments because again it's a one-way sync from inflow to QBO so if that order is being marked as paid in QBO, inflow doesn't know that so that if you uh, also mark that order as paid in inflow, you're getting now duplicate payments on the QBO side. So you'll wanna turn payment push off if that's the case. And if that's not the case, we're going to need to map the accounts that inflow is going to be updating or uh, removing uh, uh, the uh, amount from when a purchase order is synced and you've marked it as paid. Uh, so in this case, um, Unlike the sales order sync, we can actually sync to two accounts, two payment accounts, and, and this is based on the payment method that's uh, selected on the purchase order. And so the payment method can be selected on the purchase order uh, by clicking on the paid tab here, or paid field, and then there's a payment method um, field that you can then uh, select. So you might have a credit card selected or a check. Uh, selected there as the payment method um, and uh, when that purchase order sinks inflow is going to look for the payment method um, if none is selected it's going to um, update this uh, default payments uh, account check account um, so we're going to have to tell inflow which uh, in QBO account it should be updating um, when it's paid by check or default and then the payment uh, credit card account. So if the payment method was set to credit card, which QBO account should Inflow be uh, updating? And in this case, it's going to be a credit card account. So let's go ahead and, and pick that. And then once we've got the accounts mapped, we can go ahead and click on next. And now we're in the taxes mapping uh, screen. So the last thing that we have to do to complete the setup is to map our taxes. Um, so what that means is we are taking the taxes that we have in inflow and mapping them to the corresponding tax rate on the QBO side. So as I mentioned, before you get started with setting up the integration, you're going to want to make sure that your taxes in inflow um, exist in QBO as well. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to complete this tax mapping step. So I've got my taxes, the inflow taxes on the left side, and then the right side are going to be the taxes that are found on the QBO account. Um, so you can go ahead and start mapping those. So I've got a 0% tax um, in both programs, so I can go ahead and set that up. I've also got a 13% tax on the QBO side and on inflow, so I can go ahead and map those. Now, if you don't have your taxes set up um, in QBO, um, or uh, you have a tax that's in inflow but not in QBO, um, you're going to get an error, and it look, it'll look something like this. So I'm just going to go ahead for, uh, as an example, I'm going to add a tax that doesn't exist in QBO yet. Um, and the way uh, I can do that is going to my settings, so it'll be main menu, options, and then settings. Uh, in the desktop app and then I can go to manage taxing schemes and then I'm just going to add in a tax that doesn't exist in QBO I'll call it the Danny tax um, and yeah that's pretty brutal there but it is what it is um, and so yeah so I've got a Danny tax now and if I go back to the integration settings um, here's my inflow tax um, but I don't have that tax in QBO because of course it doesn't exist uh, unfortunately um, but uh, don't have it there um, and if you do get this error you're going to want to go to the 
QuickBooks side and create that tax. And again, if you're not sure how to edit your tax settings in QBO, uh, do reach out to the QBO side or um, refer to their knowledge base. Um, they'll be able to tell you what the best practices are and how to set up the taxes on their end. Once you've done that, you can come back to the integration window, um, click on check again to refresh it, um, and then you'll be able to map uh, the taxes. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and quickly delete that tax um, so that we can complete the setup. Okay, delete that Danny tax. And then we're back here and I can go ahead and delete, uh, sorry, complete the settings uh, wizard because I've got all my taxes mapped. Okay, so that's all done. And so now, from now on, anytime a purchase order or sales order um, that has the correct um, inventory or payment status um, is created in Inflow, it's going to get synced to QBO and appear there. All right. I love that video. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh boy, I, I, I couldn't hear it because I think there's the double thing going on and I remember putting in a really stupid joke in there about a Danny tax. So I apologize everyone. Oh, you didn't even hear that. That's why I was smiling <laughs> so much. And laughing. Oh boy. I love it. my jokes. But um <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that will um pretty much wrap up the webinar for today. Um, we, uh, just for the sake of time, I know we're already over an hour, um, but uh, if you did want another webinar for us to dive deep, either into the purchase order or the sales order side of things, please let us know in a comment or reach out to the support team about that. Also some last minute questions um, uh, from David, which version of uh, QB online is fine with inflow so if you're referring to the plans any of the plans will, will work with qbo um, but if you're referring to the regions i know it supports us canada uk australia uh, i believe it also supports india but the sync um, inflow doesn't really handle more than three taxes or three taxes so the sync might be a little off when it comes to the tax portion of it but it does still sync over so yeah, I hope that answers the question. And then I wasn't sure, Mark, um, if your last point was a question or if it was just a comment. So if you do have any more questions, let us know or feel free to reach out to uh, the support team at support at inflowinventory.com and we can definitely help you guys out. Yes. Yeah, so thanks for joining us, everyone. That'll probably be it for today. Uh, we'll stick around for a couple more minutes for any uh, last minute questions. Uh, the chat is a little bit laggy for us, so we'll be here for a little bit. Yeah, I think at least another minute or so, minute or two, we'll wait to see if any other chats come in. Um, but that was amazing, Danny. Thank you hey. so much for hosting it. Uh, okay, so, oh yeah, I can see how the chat's laggy. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit laggy, isn't it? Um, yeah, uh, it was a question. So, okay, um, we answered the reconciling so if it matches the the separate lines which it does um but then mark you mentioned that this is after the same has been pushed to quickbooks online maybe uh if uh is it updating an existing order that's already be, be, been synced to qbo sorry maybe that's the question um but if if that is the question for uh whatever reason um once a an order is synced to QBO, if you make changes to that order uh, later on in Inflow, if you update it in any way, those updates do get pushed to that corresponding bill um, or invoice on the QBO side. Uh, but again, it is one way. So if you're creating uh, any changes to that order on the Q QBO side, it won't get synced back to Inflow. So you'll have to make those changes on both ends if you're doing it from the QBO side first. I hope that helps answer the question, but let us know, Mark. And then Luke, is there a link to all available webinars? Uh, they are all posted on our YouTube channel. So they're all linked there. Um, this one will, I don't know how fast we can get it up, but we usually try to get it up on the same day so that you can rewatch it or send it to any of your colleagues if they're interested. Um, let me yeah. see if I can get the YouTube link to the webinars really quickly for you guys. We also do have that webinar page on our marketing sites. Yeah. Um, so it here. Okay. 
There we go. Just just sent it there. If you scroll down to the very bottom, we also post past webinars there as well. Perfect. Thank you, Danny. No worries. Yeah, I think that's better than sending the link to um, the YouTube because all the webinars are on the webinar page and then they'll go to YouTube anyways. And I think Ileana linked it too. Um, David also says, I want to know which plan of QBO online in US is fine. Um, actually, I believe all of them are fine. Uh, the only thing is I think with the plus plan, it will um, allow you to track your inventory goods as um, actual goods instead of non-inventory. So that's, I think, the only difference. But I believe any plan will allow you to just sync over as long as it has like the invoice and bill function, which I think is even the most basic one. Mm -hmm. Cool. Maybe we'll wait one more minute. I think that that's probably it for today. And um, actually, if you guys have any further questions, reach out to our support team, uh, either over live chat or you can email us. Uh, we'll be happy to help there. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining us and we'll uh, see you at the next webinar. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We appreciate it. But yeah, care, everyone. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Bye.